guys, welcome back to Black Acre Ranch. And we wanted to go ahead and show off something fun that Jeff gets to play with with his tractor. So we've got a new tool. We're gonna show it off today and see about hooking it up and in the pastures and what this awesome thing is. And since I don't speak tool, we're gonna go to Jeff and see what we're talking about. All right, honey, what do we got? So this is our landscape rake. It looks pretty big. How wide is that thing? seven foot landscape rake. So really you, t you tow this or pull it behind on the three point hitch on your tractor and it's seven feet. So this is from Armstrong Ag. And the reason I got this was because we have a couple of reasons. We have the mulched area on the small pasture that we just did. If you haven't seen those videos of the trees and all the mulching, check them out up there. Um, but we have all that debris and I wanna plant seed. And so I'm gonna rake it up with this, drag it behind the tractor and get all those branches out. The second reason is we have all of these sticky little brown bush junks that we cleaned up around that house. And I'm gonna to check to see if we can just drag this behind and rip them up. You can just grab them and rip them out of the ground. So I'm hoping this would do it. And I could just go right through the entire pasture and do it. So there's a lot of stuff that's on the ground that's kind of just junk. This is gonna scrape it. Um, but let's take a closer look at it and kind of see some of the, the fine details. First time hooking up a three-point hitch, so be patient and kind. is you get a quick hitch so that just attaches here to the three point two three and it just has little hooks that'll come by and just hook underneath these things and that's great and I asked one of my guys about it the tech dude and he said you know they make it pretty easy to hook stuff up unless you're doing this like multiple instruments every single day it doesn't really make sense to spend five six hundred bucks on some sort of quick hitch device back here and with, if this is as difficult as it is, it's actually pretty simple. These telescope out and come back with just this guy right here. And then you just gotta lower it to wherever you want. It can come out and come back in by taking these things out of this guy up here. So now this guy is where I have to put this back into and he's not quite lined up. So I had just put it over here. Well, that doesn't do me any real good. So I'm gonna try and see if I can get this in this spot. I don't know how I can do that. And maybe I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna plan to play with it and see, but otherwise she's hooked up. I'll let you know how this goes. Oh, top link.
this just gets it out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna turn the tractor off and kind of go over some details. This is a category one landscape rake, okay? It probably only weighs, I think, about 390 pounds, but it's not category two. My tractor is category two. So the difference is the super, super tiny, small tractors that are just barely above push mower are category zero. I don't even know what the purpose of those things are. So whatever. Smaller tractors that are less horsepower are category one. It means that the opening sizes around here and here are gonna be smaller. I think they're at seven eighths of an inch in diameter ID. And category two is one and an eighth. So I think it's a quarter inch bigger. Um, also, the width of the arms is wider on a category two than in a category one. Now, as I was kind of telling you about, these arms allow me to telescope in and out a little bit, and so that, that helps. So a category two tractor like this carries heavier implements. It's able to do a lot more stuff. Um, the implements are rated at a higher amounts of pressures or, or whatever else that you want to call it. Um, so you can carry a category one implement on a category two tractor. They make bushings which go here to make it the size, I believe, of this. These don't fit here. You saw the sleeve that was on the pin? That was to help it fit the top link. Um, and I guess that's okay too. I was expecting more of a sleeve also down here, but whatever, enough of that. So you got your arms. I just took off those pins, widened it, brought it to where I needed to. This will telescope forward and back, no problem. It was actually really simple. Like, oh my gosh, that was actually pretty simple. Um, put this there. The top link, you just twisted until it got the length right, went in. Now this should lift it and it should stay that all the way down. So I shouldn't have to readjust that necessarily. I don't know if this is what you do with a stand, but it seemed legit to me, so I did it. This is the lock on the top link that goes down, sits over there, so that way it won't rotate and adjust the length. As you spin this, it changes the length forward and back. So there are different types of, of landscape rakes. Uh, you know, I don't know all the different details. Everything Attachments is a company that sells them. King Cutter, I think, has them. Tractor Supply has them. All these places have them. Um, the general idea is they have flexible springs on the back that dig into the ground to some degree um, and they just comb right through the dirt, the topsoil. Um, things will bunch up in there and they kind of spill out the sides, but it's allow you to be able to clear out a bunch of debris. Um, they vary in, in the thickness of here, um, the thickness of the blade or the actual tines. Um, sometimes these are up further on some to allow more flex in the times. Um, they're, they're manufactured different ways. Did I get the best one? <coughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know. So the thing I do like about it, which a lot of them have, is the feature of this pin right here. This pin allows you to be able to come out and it has different settings and different holes. So what I can do is I can rotate different angles and be able to just repin it drop the pin down and put it at whatever angle I want. So we have seven up here and we have seven up back here. So I can actually turn this around all the way and go backwards, uh, but it has different settings. So if I wanted to go and slope everything to the side, I could put it in that guy. And then as I'm going forward, everything will drag off to one side. So that's just a function. A lot of them do have that. Some of them have only five settings. This one has seven. I don't know if it really makes a difference, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just, it's another thing, but I'm anxious to give this one a try and uh, go out there and kind of give it some, a shakedown. Um, first area I want to try is the two and a half acre small pasture we just mulched and kind of give it a run through and see. I expect this is going to take multiple trips, but um, let's see how this thing performs. <laughs> Without those two pins set in those little holes on the side on the bottom, it was wobbling back and forth a lot. 
So you turn the turnbuckle kind of things and kind of there's different pole settings. And I found some that fit. This one took a little persuasion. So again, first time ever using this at all. So just be easy on me, all right? <laughs> link is pretty much all compressed almost. Maybe my top link being short so much, I need to increase that. But as the tines come around, it's just going to increase the angle of attack. Maybe that'll help. So I'm going to adjust the top link longer to see if that'll help it get into the ground more. Because right now, a lot of times, half of it's not even touching the ground. And it's just not doing me a lot of good. So I'm going to see if I can adjust that top link and fix that.
So I've made a number of passes back and forth and I think it's looking a little bit better. Um, adjusting the top link longer helped. Um, I might try going back and adjusting a little bit more. We have so many kind of ups and downs and little things here and there that I think it's going to just fill in all these gaps and so a lot of this first passing isn't going to do quite a lot of just taking away the, the brush as much as it's just going to kind of fill in everything and almost level it. It's going to need another couple many many passes. If you have some comments or suggestions about how to, you know, how to get it maybe more in the ground or if, you know if I, did I hook it up wrong please just you know let me know anybody who's experienced if you've used a landscape rake. We have one more area let's go over to that section where we have all those weeds and see if that'll rip those suckers out of the ground because if it will that's real sweet. <laughs> much more cleared out. Looks great. super sandy soil, this stuff just has no problem ripping right out of the ground. Is it better? <laughs> I don't know, I think, I think like before we're talking, we're gonna have to go a couple passes, but it does rip them out of the ground. Some of them it just lays flat, but I think a couple passes might really pull more of them out. Um, is it better than just mowing it? Well, I don't know, maybe. So, at least with this, I'm trying to, I think I'm leveling a little bit, and I am pulling up rooting some of them, so hopefully they don't come back. So, my first thoughts, I think as a, as a landscape break, it does good for what it does, I guess. I, I, maybe my expectations are a little off. Um, let me know if I'm doing something wrong. I'm gonna try and adjust the top link a little bit more at a different times but I, I think it does do some good. It's more leveling than anything. Um, I don't know, I just kind of wish you would dig a little bit more into the ground and kind of stay in there. And I'm waiting for somebody to tell me, put 400 pounds more on the back on the tines or something. We're gonna keep doing more work. We've got a lot of stuff to do next week. It's gonna be like a polar vortex coming down. It's gonna be butt hairy cold, so I'm not sure what's going on next week besides the gate. We've got the water tanks that have to be dropped off and hopefully filled up. I appreciate you joining with us, guys. Stay tuned, keep going along. Remember, this is 187 acres. This is from scratch, old camp that was abandoned. We're building this thing into a ranch. A lot of stuff coming up in the future, from barn dominium rebuilds to barn builds to all sorts of stuff. We're just getting the animals here. So we've got nine bison coming at the end of this month. Probably another 20 coming after that, seeing how things pan out. But hey, animals are coming, so stick with us. We'll catch you next time. With you, I wanna stay with you.